Hey guys, uh, this is my presentation. <laughs> uh, so who am I? Uh, I'm also from the Chicagoland area. I saw someone in the last session say that they're from Geneva, Illinois. I think I'm around 40 minutes away in Hinsdale, if that means anything to you guys. <laughs> um, I'm also a recent high school graduate. Um, currently, I'm on a gap year, which is super exciting uh, to intern at Red Hat, but next year I'll be a freshman in college. Uh, I'm going to Caltech and hopefully studying computer science. And then uh, besides, you know, coding and computer science, I kind of was just talking about this, but I enjoy embroidering things. I love playing Minecraft uh, with friends. And unfortunately, I still use TikTok. I know that, you know, they definitely steal all my data, but it's, I can't live without it. All right. Uh, so how I got involved with Fedora, prior to joining Red Hat, I actually didn't have much formal experience with computer science, um, my school only really had two classes and uh, I don't think anyone was very enthusiastic about them. I remember one of the classes that I took, um, they're actually thinking of canceling it because not enough people are interested in taking it. So I guess I kind of looked outside of school to sort of, I don't know, further this interest in CompSci. So my first introduction to Linux was actually volunteering. There's this place in Chicago called Free Geek Chicago. And what we would do is we would take apart keyboards, computers, random electronics, sort the parts, and then make sure that you know they weren't dumped somewhere where it could be hazardous. And what they would do is that all the beginner level volunteers like me would just take apart stuff. But some of the older volunteer volunteers, older members, they would actually put together laptops and boot Linux onto them. And so that experience, sort of watching them and seeing what they were doing, and I thought that was really cool. Um, otherwise, learn sort of how to make projects and stuff from YouTube, going to hackathons. And I met my current manager at Red Hat at a hackathon, uh, which was super cool. She actually, unlike every other <laughs> recruiter, she actually took a look at my resume and she liked me enough to give me an interview and you know give me a chance. So this summer I was a Red Hat summer intern and I worked on a friendly Fedora project, which I'll talk about a little more later. Um, and now I guess you know my manager liked me enough to <laughs> let me stay for a little bit so you guys can't get rid of me. Um, I'm now helping on the infra and relaunch team for Fedora and I'll be here, well, I'll be working at Red Hat until the end of April but hopefully I'll stay contributing uh, to Fedora for a while. So Friendly Fedora was my summer project and it was actually a really perfect project for me because it was newcomers, um, just because I feel like for those without prior Linux experience, it can be a bit of a learning curve trying to understand um, like Fedora, how to install it, you know, all the simple things like that. So part of my project was um, making these videos and I have, um, so yeah, that was part of the project. And then this is kind of my oops, first introduction into Fedora as well. Um, and not only did I get to work on that cool project, but I got a little more involved in the community. Um, I was able to attend Nest and the, on the right is the screenshot of the intern panel that maybe you see some familiar faces there too. Was able to give a quick lightning talk, um, participate uh, as an apprentice, uh, as well as um, I just found that the community is so quick to reach out. You know, after I gave my lightning talk, like I see that Justin is here. He, um, I think he reached out and he sent me an email saying something like, "Oh, you know, if you ever need someone to shoot ideas off of, or you need a friend in the community, like I'm here." I just thought that was so sweet um, that everyone was going above and beyond to kind of make you know new members feel welcome and just sort of build these you know relationships. And I thought that it's really interesting being a part of this community because a lot of us have things in common, a lot of things in common, as well as a lot of things that are different. You know, everyone is from well, a lot of people are from different parts of the world and of some of the people that I meet are kind of like the first people I've ever met from that part of the world. Um, the other day I was in a call and my mentor said something like, oh, I want to 
I want to have a meeting with someone else who is also on the Relench team and we can work on, they can give you some guidance for our project. And I was like, okay. Um, and the person ended up being from the Czech Republic. And I was like, you are the first person I've ever met from the Czech Republic. So that was really cool. Uh, in the future, I definitely want to try to get more involved in writing blog posts. Um, and yeah. Challenges I faced, I think that one of the things was just getting acclimated to all the new tech stuff, you know, getting used to chatting with IRC, um, version, code, version control with Azure. Um, additionally, this was, you know, sort of Red Hat's first class of virtual interns. So one thing that I missed was sort of this, the social interaction, the sort of face-to-face -face, um, interactions that I could have had with all the other fellow interns. Thankfully, Red Hat did a lot of things to make us feel welcomed. Uh, we did some trivia nights and things like that, which are fun. Um, as well as this was sort of my first real internship. So I feel like in a classroom, when you're receiving a lesson, let's say afterwards, all your friends ask questions, you kind of know, oh, maybe I should ask questions. Or, you know, if everyone is confused about one topic, you can get together and sort of discuss it. I just felt like um, since this is my first real internship, I had no idea really <laughs> how to behave. I mean, obviously kind of professionally, but am I supposed to, you know, say good morning to everyone on Gchat? Am I supposed to, you know, speak up a lot in meetings or am I supposed to just sort of watch and, you know, participate that way? So a lot of the stuff was, um, I just sort of figured it out along the way. Thankfully, my mentor is super great and I had a lot of questions that I asked him and he um, was able to answer them, which was great. Um, another challenge that I face is kind of, I feel like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. And so um, a lot of the times when I feel like, you know, I can't get something done perfectly, it kind of cripples me in a way where, you know, I won't even start, I won't even attempt it. So this summer, it was actually great because I forced myself to be uncomfortable a lot. You know, giving this presentation is a little uncomfy for me as a total introvert. Um, but, you know, speaking up in meetings, asking questions. Uh, I wrote Brave Not Perfect there. I have this book that I'm reading. And the author of it was the founder of Girls Who Code. And what she thinks, um, the point in her book is that a lot of the times, you know, a lot of women feel like they have to be perfect or they'll take on extra roles just to get everything done um, perfectly instead of, or they'll stay doing things that they know they're good at or that they can um, do perfectly instead of being more brave and maybe you know taking on a new role or a new task or a new project, even if they know that you know they don't know everything about it, they might mess, mess up, um, fail a little, so. This is a good book, I recommend it, <laughs> but that helped me with that challenge. Um, so <laughs> that was really short, but I heard um, on the other talks that M Marie was making everyone uh, recite like a, hello, my name is Gabby, um, sort of uh, mantra, but I, I had to write it down in case I was gonna mess up. So. I don't know if I, sh should I recite this? I So I wrote it in Spanish and Chinese, Mandarin. Uh, Hi, hold on one sec, I'll be right with you. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. <laughs> okay, so yeah, actually the first part is in, is in your native language or whatever language you prefer. I see you have two here, so that's really cool. Um, and then the second part it can be in English, um, but you can you could recite it in um, your language as well, however you want to do it. Kind of whatever. Hi, Miko. Whatever your heart is telling you to do. I'm just about to grab um, just the second part in English in case you want to do that part. But okay, I, sure. do have some, I, do, I do have some questions and I did want to give um, anyone in the chat a chance to do the questions, but we'll do this part first since we're here. Um, let me just find that, uh, that text real quick. 
Okay. Uh, and just to clarify, it's English, then other language, then English? Mm -mm. So your language, language so the, hi, my name is all that will be mm -hmm. in your language. And then, oh, hold on one sec. I'm like, I have too many tabs and too many things. <laughs> Let's see, is it this one? It is, cool. Okay, so the first part, like the hi, my name is and all that, that's in your native tongue. And then the second part, um, we are from different cultures, et cetera, et cetera. That part is in English. So I'm about to grab it, just the English okay. part. So but, I was nervous that, oh, go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> I was nervous that someone, you were not allowed to repeat languages or something. So I was scared that someone would have Spanish. So I also did it in Mandarin. <laughs> I'm not fluent in either of them, but. I mean, um, you know, English is also an option. If you speak English, if you feel most comfortable in English and you would you want to say in English, that's also an option. I want you to be more comfortable than than anxious. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, All right. So I'm gonna okay. I'm just gonna mute myself so there's no overlapping sounds. Go ahead and do your. Sure. Um. Oh. Uh. Okay. I'll just do the Spanish version just because. <laughs> Okay, definitely not fluent, but I'll try. Uh, hola, mi nombre es Gabby. Soy de Chicago. Soy una mujer y hablo español. Uh, we are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was I was trying to read it from my slides and then I realized that you pasted the exact thing in the, okay. Okay, sorry guys. Hola, mi nombre es Gabby. Soy de Chicago. Soy una mujer y hablo español. We are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are of different cultures, but Fedora unites us with open source. We are Fedora. Yay! <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was really cute. And then we were like, oh no! It was cute. All right, so I had a couple questions for you. Um, you know, you are just coming from high school and you're going into college. So I'm curious, mm -hmm. like, and if I miss this in your slides, forgive me, but I'm curious, like, how did you kind of learn about open source and like, what, was that in high school that you learned about those things? Or uh, just I'm curious, you know, where you were exposed to it. So you yeah. said you saw somebody doing installation. That was what you said, right? Yeah, so at Free Geek Chicago, they would boot Linux Mint onto the laptops that they would build. And I never really participated in that part because you had to be a volunteer there for a couple months before you reached that point. Um, but I watched everyone do it because we were all working at the same time. And it was really neat um, seeing everyone just sort of, you know, even though I had no idea what was going on, it was kind of cool to watch everyone, you know, take these random parts that would have been thrown out somewhere and then, you know, build laptops and computers for those who need them in Chicago. Um, but since then, I guess my first real introduction was after my manager assigned me to do stuff um, for Fedora. And so that's how I got introduced. Cool. introduced. Right, um, okay, there's a question in the chat. What were you most surprised to learn through your internship and working with the Fedora community? That's a good question. I think that, um, at both Red Hat and within the Fedora community, I feel like everyone is very receptive and open to ideas. It's not like in a traditional, I feel like traditionally, you know, the boss comes up with an idea and then everyone below them just sort of obeys, does exactly what they say versus, you know, in Fedora, I feel like if I had an idea, you know, I could talk to some people and if it was a good idea, maybe they'd listen and then we could make this into a real thing. Um, and it's not like, you know, you have to be a super senior member of the community in order to create any sort of impact. So I think like the, um, the thing that you're actually kind of referencing, the word is meritocracy. Um, this idea that, you know, you come with, um, work and, um, skill and, uh, effort enthusiasm, whatever it might be, and then you can get credit for that. So 
uh, in some ways, that's meritocracy is like what makes um, Fedora as awesome as it is. <laughs> um, but meritocracy also has its own um, problematic things. I lost your video. I don't know if any anyone else lost Gabby's oh, video. I get it. I don't know what happened. It might just be me. There's a chance that it's my connection, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh no. Uh... Oh, okay. So apparently just, oh, some people can see you and some people can. Okay, so it's fine. I want to see your lovely face, but that's all. Oh, some people can't see. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a total, it it's a total mix. Um, I think it's fine. What was I about to ask you, though? Oh, gosh, I got like halfway in the middle of the, the conversation of the question. And then um, I'm looking for the link to the. Oh, I can see you again. <laughs> oh, you're looking for the link to the video. Sweet. Mm -hmm. um, meritocracy. So, right. So that's that I think you're kind of getting to. Um, this idea of meritocracy. So meritocracy is really cool and open source, but uh, it also has its negative sides. Like sometimes meritocracy can mean that like jerky people get to be jerky um, just because they're talented. That's That can happen. Um, and also like I think we have to think about meritocracy in the terms of um, you know, people starting places, you know, so even if people are here and they're enthusiastic, and of course we want them, we welcome them, um, we have to realize that there's this, not everyone has these opportunities, right? So we want you to somehow enable them even more. So meritocracy is one of the best things about Fedora, but also um, has its cons too. So anyway, just a couple thoughts about meritocracy as a thing. I think about it a lot <laughs> as a community manager. Um, how do you measure merits? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's it's really, <laughs> what do you mean by jerky? Um, I mean, someone who's not a nice person. So someone, sometimes people, um, if they have a lot of skills or experience with something, can get away with being rude. <laughs> yep. So I think I'm. It's actually the word jerk, like a like a rude person, and then like adding a y is just like a English slang for like a descriptor. So um. So anyway, <laughs> act rude sometimes if they think that they're hot shiz but how do you how do you measure merit i think it's different in any place but i think that's one of the major issues with meritocracy but i think like it's it's weaved into the culture of open source pretty strongly so it's definitely an interesting topic to explore well if there's no other questions in the chat um, I guess we can close up for today. Thanks for coming and presenting and, and, and sharing your story with us. I'm excited to continue to have you in Fedora. And, you know, if you ever need any support, once again, <laughs> I'm also here. Oh, my gosh. Wait. I wanted to ask, who was your mentor? Uh, Mohan. Yeah. I knew yeah. that. I knew to call him <laughs> out. He's a really cool guy. Yep, Mohan is an awesome guy. Oh, so, and write the link. Okay, so I couldn't um, find the video from like a really quick search, but I have my final presentation and the video is embedded in it. So I feel like uh, you can open it if you have a Red Hat email address, but I will, is there somewhere where I could paste the link once I find the video? Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, you can, I am. Um, you, you can put it into the, um, just the event chat. And it's okay. going to be open for a couple more hours. So whenever you find it, cool. Sure. And then, yeah, sorry. Um, no worries. And then for everybody else, I think we only have two more sessions left. And that is my session at, at 2 p.m. And then um, 
we might just do closing remarks right then, depending on how many people are around. I know it's Sunday and everyone wants a weekend, including me. So I will see you guys in a half an hour for my session. And yes, thanks again for telling your story, Gabby. We'll see you soon.